see, nine minutes before 11 o'clock. There was a story in the news this morning about conjoined twins. Did you see the story? No. I think it was a 21-hour 21 21-hour 21 operation. 21 hours. And the two, I think it's two little girls. Um, and they will now live their lives and, and have normal lives instead of being... I think they were conjoined at the spine, I think. Anyway, it's just amazing what medical advances we have made in, in our world. And thanks to people like Dr. Holly Hedrick, who's on the phone right now, um, she's at the uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We've spoken to a few um, doctors from that hospital, and they have quite the reputation, especially when dealing with children. She is going to talk to us about advanced technology in fetal surgery and how fetal surgery can help save and uh, better the lives of children. She's the attending surgeon in the Division of Pediatric General Thoracic and Fetal Surgery at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Louis. I'm saying right, Louis Schnaufer, Endowed Chair in Pediatric Surgery. Obviously, I'm reading. Good morning, Dr. Holly Hedrick. Good morning, doctor. Good, good morning. Are you in uh, the hospital right now? I am. All right. Well, thank you for being on the air, and I absolutely thank you for what you've chosen to do. Um, the the, uh, the I don't know if you heard me talking about the the surgery. I think it was in New York where they separated conjoined twins. Twenty one hours of surgery. How do you? How does a doctor do that? How do you do that? How do you st- stay focused for twenty one hours? Well, there's a um, you know when you're really focused um, on something else, all your other body functions sort of shut down. There's a there's a phenomenon called flow, and I think surgeons definitely get there. They definitely feel it at times, where what you're doing is all that matters. Wow, it's amazing. Um, I think it's that way for marathon runners and and other people too. So, if if could that surgery have been done uh, prior to their birth? Could they have separated conjoined twins in the in the womb? No. No. No, I mean, I, I, you know, the the thing with separation of conjoined twins is to really delineate the anatomy and not have any surprises and have the children be um, well nourished and sturdy. A lot of times, tissue expanders happen beforehand and um, things to to help give more skin coverage. So um, that's not something that we can tackle before the baby's born. But we do work really hard to diagnose it and to to sort of know what we're going to be battling. Um, which helps in the management. Is it a hard is it a hard sell to convince a parent to allow fetal surgery? Well, I think the whole idea of fetal surgery is that we've identified a problem and we've we've done you know all the homework and the background research to know that we could intervene that could change how things are once they're born uh-huh. uh, a lot of families want to you know are very are very um motivated to do that yeah yeah i guess so, so i think we almost have the opposite problem that we have to be sure they understand uh-huh. because okay. mom is patient and um you know we we have to be sure that that everybody understands you know what they're what they're getting into what kind of and we, we don't want to do it unless we think we're going to benefit right so. what, what types of birth defects have are, are, are you most successful at correcting prior to birth so in the early days of fetal surgery it was all about fatal defects things like uh, congenital diaphragmatic hernia or big lung masses or big masses that come off the back um, really life threatening and if nothing is done there's no chance and so it was intervening to remove something to sort of restore normal development so that the baby had a chance. Um, it's, it's, it's evolved over the years, and now the most common fetal surgery is actually done for spina bifida, which is um, a birth defect that is not fatal, but it has a lot of morbidities after the baby's born uh, throughout their life. And so if we can intervene and change the course of that by covering the, the defect in the back, um, that, that, that has a huge, a huge potential benefit to, to the family and to the patient and to you know, the cost of taking care of that patient. Right, um, right. So, um, so it has evolved over the years. Has uh, medicine evolved so much that when the baby's still in the womb, you can detect the proper number of chromosomes, and then if there aren't enough, you can fix that. So when a child is born, it's not born with Down syndrome? So that has not been um, 
been something that's been done. Um, you know, we can detect genetic abnormality, um, and that's really about figuring out how the babies are going to be treated afterwards. Um, there are there is a lot of work happening for isolated gene defects um, to try to replace those, sort of a prenatal approach to gene therapy, mm-hmm. um, but not not a whole chromosome, um, but a, a, an identified specific gene is, is the is the current focus. One day, Robert. So things one, like sickle cell um, disease. <laughs> yeah. Wow. One day you'll ask that question and I say, "Oh yeah, we've been doing that for years." Yeah. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> we'll be on there at twelve. Hopefully. Yeah, I don't know. That, that, that is the that is the goal, right? Is to yeah, yeah. Is, um, is to just make things um, earlier and earlier and less invasive, so that um, a whole life can be changed. What so. is what is the normal? But not yet. <laughs> what is the normal path that the mom takes? Does she go to her her regular? What do you call it, baby doctor? When you're pregnant, Robin? What do you call it? What's that doctor called? Uh, oh, Not gee. System. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would know, of course. So Pediatrician, okay. right? The baby I know doctor, the answer to this obstetrician. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, obst- <laughs> I know. O- obstetrician, right? That's, <laughs> that's right? Yeah, I, right. obstetrician. So anyway, does she go to okay. him and he says, you need to go to the to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia? Is that how that works? Yeah, so that, so most, most, most mothers have a, a mid-trimester ultrasound, and that's when most things are detected. And so um, typically, if they're in their obstetrician's office, then they're referred to a maternal fetal medicine doctor, um, and they are specialized in anomalies and genetic problems. And um, then typically the referral either comes from um, the maternal fetal medicine or the obstetrician or the, the parents themselves just, um, you know, searching things and, and, and coming. Doctor, I know you've, I think you've been on with us before, but I, I certainly know doctors from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia have been on before. And what I've always wondered if here in Ocala, Florida, um, a, a young mom is listening and they've, they've had some kind of a red flag go up from their ultrasound. Do they call you? I mean, how, or, or do they just depend on local yeah, doctors? Yeah. It's, um, well, you know, we, we definitely partner with local physicians frequently, and we, we think that's best. Um, they can call us directly at 1-800-IN-UTERO, and then there's a, a website that we often get inquiries through, mm-hmm. which is um, fetal surgery at um, fetalsurgery.chop.edu. Okay. Um, that, and so it, they come in different ways. Uh, doctor, you give us such great information, and in ten minutes, it's so hard to get. But but the the website uh, <laughs> that you gave us it works. I, I'm so sorry, we have to wrap it up. But thank you, Doctor Holly Hedrick. Thank you for being on with us today, and keep up the good work. You're you're outstanding. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. All studios. This is W O C A Ocala Gainesville The Villages 1370 AM 963 FM The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Carmen Roberts. The president steps away from Washington for the first time since taking office to attend a GOP congressional retreat in Philadelphia. Two big topics, Obamacare and taxes. Both of those we anticipate having little or no Democratic cooperation. So we are working with the House to make sure these measures are reconcilable. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. A 